Welcome back, Pouring Nation. I'm excited about today's episodes because you guys have asked me a lot of questions about this. So we are going to do an experiment with a base coat. We're going to have a base coat on this side. We're going to not have a base coat on this side. And I'm doing this with 8x10 canvases, 80 square inches, plus the sides is another 18 square inches, 98 square inches, divided by uh, 25 gives, gives us 4 ounces of paint that I need for each. So this one I'm going to use 4 ounces full of paint, which is my little silicone mug here. And, um, and this one I'm going to do an ounce or two of base coat and then 2.5, 3 ounces of paint there. Now these are some leftover colors that I had. Uh, one thing really quickly, I don't always use colors that look really well together because sometimes, like when I look at these colors, I think the, the, the green really doesn't quite fit and the blue's a little bit too ultramarine blue. But I have gotten a couple of pores that I really loved by using some colors that are odd. And since this is an experiment anyways, it's the perfect time to, to test some color combinations I wouldn't normally do. These are all in the you know the green blue area on the color wheel so generally they should should work but we're gonna try them out so what we want to test with this is does a a base coat matter what does it give you now there's a ton of different ways to do base coats you can actually paint your canvas and let it dry that's a base coat and there's a reason to do that if you don't really want to pour over all of the area that'd be a perfect thing to do or if you uh, want to have negative space again that would be the perfect thing to have the the canvas already painted another thing another reason why people paint the canvases because these canvases are very rough and they have gesso which just makes them a little bit more rough the rougher your surface is the more paint you need to cover it so if you paint a nice you know semi-gloss or, or even satin finish on the end you're going to have to use less paint to cover this canvas than you would if it was just gesso. So that's one reason. The, uh, the reason why people gesso is because it, it ha gives something for the paint to hold on to. Um, in paint pouring, because we're pouring it off, sometimes that may not be what we want. Um, base coats also get used for things like uh, the Shelly Art paint blooms. She uses, they call it a pillow, but again, it's just a base coat that's thick like a pillow. Um, and it has a specific purpose for that pour to allow the paints on top to sit in the pillow and when stretching the pillow moves instead of the colors on top. In this case, that's exactly what we're going to do. Because I have my um, base coat on this side and then I pour my paint in, my uh, theory is that I'm going to be able to keep the pattern way better on this side because the paint on the outside is what's going to get pushed off rather than my pattern in the middle. This side, if I pour a, a area about this big, I'm expecting only the center of about this big to get to stay on the canvas and everything else is going to get rubbed off. And I'll show you that here in just a minute. So I've moved my paints over here because I have another camera on the side here. You can kind of see the leg on. So I want to be able to pour here. So again, the four ounce is for with no base coat and the three ounce is for having a base, uh, base coat. So I think I want this color to be on the, in the middle. So I'm going to start with it. Now these paints, um, let me pop this in here and then I'll show you. These paints are on the thin side. They barely make a mound and immediately disappear. So, it's kind of hard to see there. There we go. So they barely make a mound and immediately disappear. And that's what I'm looking for here for this because I want the colors to mix a little bit.
All right, so we're going to use the green as the base coat. It's a little bit more than an ounce. It's probably an ounce and a half, which is perfectly fine. Just have a little bit extra paint. For those of you that have been here before in the Pouring Nation, welcome back. For those of you that are new, this is the, what I do on my channel. I do experiments so that you and I can learn and we can all save money, save time, and get to those beautiful acrylic pours faster. So if this is the type of content you want, please like, subscribe, and hit the bell notification for our weekly videos. Also, I want to ask you, how do you use base coats? to change the look of your paintings. Let us know in the comments below so that we can all learn together and let's get back to the experiment. Okay, so here is gonna be the difference. Because I have this, and I'm gonna look specifically at this side, because I have this base coat on this side, as I pour, uh, what happens with paint is the edge, as, as the edge gets onto the canvas, it grabs the canvas and the paint coming after it rolls over and then it just keeps rolling over itself. So I'm losing the whole outside of the painting. And what a base coat does is allows that paint to be the stuff that's lost and we don't lose the center. So you, you'll you be able to see right here, especially like right here, see how it's really light and then I have my darker stuff and then I have my really dark stuff. As I'm as the weight of the paint is coming over there, it's all rolling on top of each other. Look, I've already lost the light there. So I lost two or three layers of paint there as it was going. Same thing here. I had the lighter stuff on the outside, but it's just rolling right over the top of each other. Get a little off that way. And then this direction. See this whole band of color I'm going to lose as it comes off and rolls over. And again, see how, see how this whole band of color right here is just condensing as it comes down here? Now, it's, that's not a bad thing. It's just different. And one of the reasons why you'd want a uh, base coat is so that you can capture and contain the pattern that you want. And unfortunately on this side I let a lot of my main pattern get uh, pulled off to the side but I want to show you see this band of blue here? Well let's do let's do this corner first just because the paint's already over there. Okay. So now as I'm coming back, I have my green, my blue, my lighter, my blue, and then the other bands. As I go to this direction, look how this is not getting condensed. Look how it's not, it's just the whole thing is kind of rolling this way. So I'm going to be able to keep all of these bands because I have my base coat. So normally on that painting, I would have lost probably up to... I don't want to get close to, to about right here just because of how the paint is moving. And now this case, you're going to kind of see it. I've got some green underneath there, so it's not going to condense as much, but that base coat Let me just flip this around. So 
You see we lost the green, so now the paint is rolling up on itself and I'm kind of losing a piece. Not as much, because I had the green underneath and it's kind of rolling off the green. But... Okay, again, there's no wrong way to what I did, but on this side where I had the uh, base coat, I got a lot more of the darker layers on the outside than I did on the other painting. And I got a bigger section of the original look and feel to stay on the canvas. Whereas this one, I had to tilt off a lot and it kind of rolled over itself on the outside so I didn't get much of those blues or the, um, the dark green to stay on the canvas. Both are beautiful, I mean, look at this. I really like both of these, how they turned out. But it's just a different way to have your paintings. If you love all the colors that you want and you want to keep them all, you might want a base so you can keep some of those outer rings on your pour. Uh, if you don't really mind and you want maybe some bigger... Um, more stretched features in the middle, then you might not put one on and let just the center shine. So that's a quick way that I use my base coats to determine how my painting looks. And again, there are a ton of other ways to do it, but at least understanding what a base coat can and can't do for you will allow you in the future to, as much as possible with paint pouring, kind of control what's happening.